Christmas isn't just a time to decorate your house, to spend time with loved ones, and to open long-awaited presents. Christmas is a time to remember, to remember that salvation doesn't come from within, it comes from above. To remember that infinitely better than the magic of Christmas is the miracle of Emmanuel. To remember that God was not and is not untouched by the pain and suffering of this world. To remember that Jesus isn't just part of the Christmas story, but Christmas is part of the Jesus story. To remember that there is no grace without a cross and no cross without a manger. To remember that Jesus doesn't just want us to remember what he did, but to join him in what he is doing. So this year, let the lights remind you of the light of the world who came into darkness for us. Let the gifts remind you of the greatest gift of all. And this year, make your heart like Bethlehem and receive the King. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. How's everybody doing? Doing well? Yeah, Christmas is here, finally. It's amazing. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell him, man, you look good. <laughs> turn to your other neighbor and say, I, you were my second choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Welcome to Compelled Church. My name is Scotty. I'm the family pastor here. I'm just so excited to be here with you guys tonight celebrating the baby celebrating Jesus. Welcome to all of you that are watching online. Thank you for taking the time out and joining us as well. We're going to have some fun tonight. And uh, if you're visiting with us, maybe this is your first time with, uh, with us at Compelled, uh, we want to encourage you to stop by the Welcome Center in the lobby uh, as you as exit and uh, fill out a connection card. Let's us get to know you. Let's us know that you were here. Gives you an opportunity to get to know us better as well. Online, you can click a button uh, as well. Or if you want con contactless experience, uh, you can do so through our app as well, and we want to celebrate your visit with us here. So with that, we are going to do one of my most favorite things this time of year, and I hear, uh, I, th I think it's said best from one of my favorite Christmas movies, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. So why don't you stand up to your feet, and we're going to worship together tonight. to the world the Lord is come let her receive her King let every heart prepare in room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing Sound deep. 
sing this. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ, the Lord, sing we give. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Christ, the
with me, God. We, we celebrate you, Jesus. We're thankful that, that, Heavenly Father, that you would send your Son to this earth as a gift. That on this day, Lord, that we recognize that our lives, when we surrender them to you, God, when we accept the gift of Christ, are changed forever. This room is filled with many lives, God, that would be very different if it wasn't for Jesus and what you've done. And so, God, we want to take a moment to acknowledge you and to say glory to the highest because the Savior is born. We're thankful, God. We love you. We honor you tonight. We pray these things in your name. Amen. We just say amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a king wearing a magnificent crown. That's not it. Oh, really? L let me try it again. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a powerful, well-trained soldier. No, Dad, you did it again. That's not right. Okay, uh, how about this? And this will be a sign for you. You will find a democratically elected president. What? No. A trendy motivational speaker. No way. A big tech CEO. A movie star. Time traveling cyborg. No, no, none of those are right. The shepherds weren't gonna find any of those. Okay then, little Miss Know It All. What did they find? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Oh, that's right, a baby. Does that even make sense? A, a baby is totally helpless. Yeah, but if Jesus didn't come as a baby, mm -hmm. then he would have known what it was like to grow up. Ah, but wait, why did he have to grow up? That's easy to save us. Ah, well then that means that the best part about Christmas is... The baby. Right, the baby. Oh, well, I guess it's time you get some sleep. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. No, we're not done with the story. Okay, just a little longer. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom That's a good one, huh? Merry Christmas. Everybody doing all right? Yeah. It's great to see everybody on this Christmas Eve. We've uh, really, uh, man, Christmas came quick this year, didn't it? It was just here. 
March, March, April, and May kind of went slow, but man, after that, Christmas came a little faster, but we're glad to see everybody, and we want to tell all of our kids, all of our children, how many children, if you're a children, raise your hand, okay, all right, if you're really, really quiet, Pastor Scotty's got stuff for you afterwards, right, am I right, but if they make noise, you get nothing, right, <laughs> Merry Christmas, no, I'm kidding. Make sure parents, your kids get a, a Christmas bag uh, on the way out, and that would be really great. This, this month, we have really enjoyed uh, our theme that we've just been, we just call it Fireside Stories. You can see we've got a fireside here, and we've got a, a little room, and every, every single service, somebody has told their story. And I've just been calling it their Christmas story, because the Christmas story is when Jesus came to the earth to save us. But all of us need to have a Christmas story when Jesus came to us, when Christ came into our life, when when he transformed us, when he rescued us. And so we've just been talking to a different person every service and saying, hey, tell us your story. How did you find Christ? What was your life like before that? And every single one has been an incredible, incredible blessing, hasn't it? And so tonight we're going to continue that with our theme, and our theme tonight on this Christmas Eve is, is called Being Rescued, Being Rescued, and I've asked if Martin Hall will come out and share his story, so would you just give him a Christmas Eve welcome to Martin Hall as he comes out. How you doing? Good. Good. Merry Christmas. Martin is a, uh, uh, him and his family attend here, he's a member here, he leads uh, couple groups, but he leads one of our groups is Monday Night Overcomers for Men, 6.30 on Monday nights, but uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, Martin, um, and your family. Sure. So uh, my name is Martin Hall, and I am the director of the Adult and Teen Challenge of Northwest Ohio uh, that kind of helps rescue those that struggle with addiction. Can, can I break in on it? Yeah. He's not just the director of it. He's the founder of it. Martin's going to tell a story in a minute, and God has moved him and his wife to start a Life Challenge, Teen Challenge, right here in the Metro Toledo area, and so he started from scratch. Okay. Right? I do. Yeah, yeah, we are. He's modest, which is a good thing on Christmas Eve, right? It is. I Go ahead. So. Sorry, I didn't mean sure. to interrupt you. Sure, um, So my wife and two daughters were here earlier at the, at the previous service, but we've been married for about 21 and a half years. And uh, so we came down here, we, we got called down here because of the crisis uh, of, of heroin addiction and overdoses uh, that are happening in Northwest Ohio. As a matter of fact, right across the state line in uh, the 612, 43612 and 43613 area zip code uh, is the, like the third hottest spot for overdose in the, in the U.S. So there's a real need for, for, uh, for those that, that are struggling with addiction. And, and I can tell you, uh, from a personal aspect, as you'll, as you'll learn, that God has a real heart for those that struggle with addiction. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'll back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about myself. I'm somebody that, that went through uh, the foster system when I was a kid um, because I had been abused uh, by my mom's uh, boyfriend at the time. And um, my wife or my, my uh, sister and I were put into foster care. She was four, I was five. And, um, and we uh, from our first home, we were separated, and we didn't see each other again until I was 17 when I graduated from high school. I uh, started on my, on my, the night I actually graduated from high school, but, um, but she, she ended up going to a home and was, was adopted the next, you know, at the very next home, uh, whereas I spent uh, the next three years going from home to home to home and did the tour of the foster system in, in Kent County, which is over on the west side of, of the state of Michigan, in probably about 30 different homes in three years. And so uh, during that time, I learned how to become what other people wanted me to become. I didn't know uh, what it was to be wanted. And so I needed to put myself in a position to be wanted. And so I tried to become the perfect kid and uh, was, was a people pleaser, a manipulator. And, um, so, and this was by the time I was seven. So uh, I learned very, very early. And so I was finally adopted when I was eight uh, mm. with, my, with my adopted family. I stayed there until I, until I graduated from high school. Um, during that time, my, my adopted family had huge hearts. And they, were like, they, they really loved, they loved the Lord, and, and they were Christians, and we went to church the entire time I was there. 
but their hearts were so big, we always had people coming in. And I remember at one point, um, there were 16 of us kids that were in the home. Yeah, I mean, and my, and my adopted dad was driving semi on the road. So, uh, I mean, we were, we were I, was, I felt like I was just a face in the crowd. And, and again, I, 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 I didn't have any value. I was just there. Uh, and and I, so I just tried to get along. And so when I turned 17, uh, I graduated from high school, and I went back to my natural family. And, and I discovered everybody there was drug addicts and alcoholics. And so again, being who I was at that time, just trying to please people, I just joined in. And, and so I uh, went from uh, you know not doing any drugs at all, uh, as far as like pot or anything like that. I had done speed when I was a kid, and I had smoked cigarettes since I was 12. But um, I started, you know, started smoking pot, and and then I I, uh, I met my natural dad and drove semi with him, and he got me hooked on crystal meth, and, um, and so you know, and then from there I was just doing everything I could get my hands on until like seven years later I was I was snorting heroin on on a semi regular basis. I was also working two full time jobs. I worked at a hotel at night, being a night auditor, and then. I was at a car porter at a car dealership, and then I sold drugs on the side as well. So I was a fully functional drug addict. And somebody had dared me to go sober for 24 hours. And, uh, and, I, and I was like, oh, sure, I can do that. And so I tried to uh, go sober. And about 18 hours in, I realized that I really, well, I already knew that I hated myself. I, I, I despised everything about myself. And, and I can't remember... Even, even after I was a Christian, I can't remember a day that I didn't think about com committing suicide. And this is from the, from the earliest ages, even four, four on. Like I, can't, I, I had always wanted to commit suicide. And so being sober for, for 24 hours or 18 hours into it, I couldn't, I couldn't stand myself. And so I tried to commit suicide, and I was in my drug dealer's basement. That's where I lived. And he came down uh, in there and and, and found me in a puddle of blood, and he was like, dude, you, you cannot do that here. You're like, you have to leave. And so, um, so I, I, the only thing I could do is, is I went to back to my adopted family and asked for help. And um, they recommended Teen Challenge. And, and so, uh, and I, I kind of had a vague idea of what Teen Challenge is, and, and, and I'll explain to you what it is. It's a uh, it's a year-long residential program that has every minute of your day programmed for you. Uh, you're up at 5.45 in the morning, lights out at 9.45 p.m., and you study the Bible day in, day out, five days a week. You're going to school. As uh, a matter of fact, in the year that you're there, you typically will get almost uh, four and a half bachelor's degrees worth of class time. You know, and th that's how much scripture is just pumped into you. And uh, you have to memorize it, you have to write about it, you have to read it, uh, and, you know, and study it. And so, um, so I, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go to this because I want to I wanna change. And so being in Grand Rapids, I could have went to the Muskegon one, which was 10 minutes away, but I really wanted to make sure that, that <clears throat> I changed my life. And so I, uh, I, I chose Detroit Teen Challenge and went over there, and, which is two and a half hours away, and, and I knew that None of my friends would come pick me up unless I was really serious about wanting to leave. And so um, I went in with a goal of being there for three months, just wanted to learn how to live sober, figure out what everybody else found in life, how they could live without any type of substance. And uh, so I, that three months turned into six months. And then, um, then I got kicked out my first time. So, uh, and then, then I went back two weeks later, uh, and I got kicked out again three weeks later. And then, um, and then my mom, my adopted mom, begged for me to be able to come back again. And, uh, and, and they allowed me, they graciously allowed me to come back. Now, uh, I hated Teen Challenge. I hated the authority. I hated the rules. I hated the structure. I, I, like, I hated everything about it. I didn't mind the academics, which I was studying. I was studying God's Word, and, and I thought that was kind of fun because that was a challenge, and I could prove that I was smarter than everybody else around me, and, and so I could get better grades. Um, so I didn't mind that portion of it, but I just hated everything else about it. And so the and, and so and I would set people up for getting in trouble. I had really bad. I was a prankster, and like I would play pranks and get them in trouble as staff were coming by. And so. And the staff knew I was guilty. They just couldn't pin anything on me. <laughs> so I was just like that type of guy. And so it uh, caused a lot of rules to be uh, put in place. So let me, let me ask you this. Like, 
like Teen Challenge or Life Challenge, it's called now. Every day they have chapel. Mm -hmm. I've I've spoken there. I yeah. speak there every couple months. You know, it's like so you're hearing the gospel, but you at this point have not given your life to Jesus. You're just oh no in the system. Right? No, you're just I was, in the in the center. I was looking at it as like okay, I need to learn new habits, like in just a new way of life. And, and the gospel was just going over my head. I was so you not, haven't asked Jesus into your heart. No, no. Okay. no. And so the third time I was in, in my 10th month, um, we, had, we had to study uh, a certain verse, uh, which now I consider it my life verse. Uh, it's Ephesians 2.10. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so I, I looked at that verse, and, and sometimes the Holy Spirit will just like point something out, and like your eyes are just caught on, on something. And, and that's what happened to me, and I was just stuck on this verse. Uh, it was an assignment that we had to do, and I had to go into the Greek and, you know, and, and, and look at a lexicon and stuff like that. So I started really digging in, and, and I realized that when Paul had written this verse to, to the church in Ephesus, he was saying, hey, look, before God created the world, he actually knew who you were, and he had written out a blueprint, blueprint or a, a, a plan for your life. And, and, and I started thinking about that, and I was like, wow, wait. Is that if that's true? Maybe I should look at what I've done in my past. And so I, like, I actually literally did. I took some paper and I wrote out everything that I had done. So I was 27 years old at the time, and and I wrote four pages out of everything that I had done. And I looked at, at, at all all of those, and there was not one thing on there that that God would go, yeah, I want somebody to do that. There was only there, actually there was one thing that He could arguably say, yeah, that's a good idea to do that, and that was graduate from high school nothing else there was absolutely nothing else and so i realized that i was going to be held accountable for everything that i had done when god had actually created a different plan for my life and and i was like oh man this is i mean i'm in terrible shape like i, I was i was literally scared for my life um mm -hmm. and so i surrendered my life to jesus at that time thinking if he's gonna he's gonna wipe all of this away and give me a new a new life and a new option and new plans for me, that's a that's a really good deal. And, and I mean, all I have to do is surrender, and say I'll 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 take that. Um, and so I did. And and I didn't I didn't say anything to anybody for two reasons. One, I didn't want to be the guy that would make the because we had a lot of people that 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 would make large confessions of faith in the program, and then their behavior behind the scenes was just clearly not Christian. And so I didn't want to be labeled as one of those. And then the other thing is, is I, I didn't think anybody would actually believe me that I had made this decision. And so, um, so I didn't say anything at all, and I was really, really quiet about it. And the, a couple things that changed that I noticed in my life, one was my language changed. Like, I, I mean, like, I, was, I had foul, foul language as far as cursing-wise and profanity. Just, I didn't know how to not swear. And, and like that, and, and it wasn't just just the physical speaking uh, language changed, but like my, my thought life changed. Like I didn't, I didn't think uh, of the profanity anymore. And I started viewing other people differently. I started seeing them uh, as people that were images of God. People, so all of us are created with this, with this, this image that, that God has placed on us. I mean, that's, that's written about in, in Genesis. So, so when did this happen? Like It was in September of 97. So, like a lot of people think, you got to do that in church. You have to do that with a pastor. You got to do that. with Yeah, it, it it happened in class. You, you were know, in class. Alone. I was just in class. Yeah. Well, we had in last we, service. You said nobody around really realized what was. No, going no, on. nobody knew. Yeah, I mean, like we we had class. And I, I want to say there was probably like thirteen or fourteen other students that were in in the in in my class with me. But, uh, but I didn't say anything to anybody. I, so you just like, right there, just surrendered yeah, your life I just, to Christ. I just made, uh, we actually had pews in the, in the, uh, in the sanctuary then. Uh, but I, like, I, just, I, I just made a, like a, an altar in, in, of the pew and just like prayed. I was like, God, I need, I need this. If, if you really did write out a plan for my life, I need, I, need to, I need to know that because I know that everything I've done up to this point is not, is not godly. And, and I think... I really think that you are going to hold me accountable for everything that I've done. Hmm. And, and Jesus already paid the price for that so I could start fresh. You know, like that was, that was, that was new to me. Like I, I, like I couldn't comprehend it. And so, um, again, my language changed. And then the, the way I started seeing people changed. And, and I remember like a couple days later, 
we were riding a bus uh, to, to church, and, and I was going down Seven Mile, and we were passing this liquor store, and I saw a bunch of homeless people standing around. And I was ty- the type of person that I was mean. Like, I would, I would scream at people that, that were, that were uh, homeless, or I would throw pennies at them, trying to, like, just, like, I was degrading to, to other people. And I remember seeing them and in, in, in thinking, Lord, I'm not going to be able to have a chance to be able to, to share the gospel of who you are to them. Can you send somebody into their life today it, you know, if possible today, that will tell them about who you are. Um, you know, I mean, that they need to know because they, they have a, there's a better way of living for them. And then as soon as that thought came, I was like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. That's not, that's not me. That's not Martin Hall. That, that, is, that has nothing to do with anything I've ever thought before or how I've dealt with people before. And so I knew that something had changed in my life at that point. Like, I knew that, that Jesus was real. And so... Um, I only had like four months left of the program, and so I, like, I devoured it. Like, I, I took as much uh, time as I could with with the pastors. Pastor Idarak, I mentioned him. He was my mm-hmm. spiritual father. This this guy was absolutely amazing. Dropped out of MIT to be able to go to, um, to to Bible school. It wasn't that he couldn't finish MIT. He just he felt God's call on his life, and because of his obedience, I think uh, is why I'm here. Uh, he looked at me as a project. I was able to, when I graduated the program, I was able to work under him for the next year and a half and then uh, was able to go to Bible school and then come back and work under him for another couple years. Uh, he was just a massive, massive influence in my life. And um, I, I, I honestly, I don't know that I would be where I'm at without his, his pouring into me and, and mm-hmm. his mentorship. But, uh, but I, I was able to graduate. Uh, I, I begged to stay on as an, as an intern, uh, and then stayed on as a, as a staff member, met my wife. Uh, she came to work uh, as, as a, in the women's division, and her, her mom uh, had told her, she was like, yeah, you can work at Teen Challenge, just don't marry any graduates. So, um, you know, our second date, we decided to get married. I actually, I, literally, I cannot remember asking Darla to marry me. I think we just decided we were going to get married. And 11 months after we met, we got married. We've been married for 21 and a half years, have two daughters. But, uh, but since then, uh, you know, God, what God has done in, in our marriage is uh, we've, we, we have really been focused on doing what God has in front of us, which has allowed us to be able to be part of two different church plants, uh, to come down here and, and work with those that struggle with addiction. Um, so I do that. And then also with uh, my full-time job, I, I work at a, as a boys' home, a group home for boys that have had failed adoptions. And um, so I get to breathe life into everybody that I meet. It, it's, it's, it's really cool in, in that aspect, looking at the fact that, that God, I, I believe in, and I really believe in the sovereignty of God and, and, and the divine calendar. And he places people in our lives. And so we get to... Uh, we get to be the image bearer of, of Christ to share uh, God's love and prophetically call out, you know, who they are. In, in, mm. in, because some people just don't know that they're created in, in God's image. And, and so, we well, um, didn't have, have people telling you that when you were growing up, like you're no, you're blessed, you're special. No, you're, never you're a blessing to our life. We love you. Uh, I, I had heard, I had heard, I love you, but but I didn't believe it. Like I, I just didn't believe it because their actions didn't the, their actions didn't portray that. Um, yeah. and, and, uh, and I and I know I'm a words of affirmation guy, and, and I just didn't I didn't hear that there was anything special about me. I was there. I knew that I knew that my adopted parents got a paycheck every month from the state to be able to help support uh, them for having me there, and that was the only reason I thought I was there. Uh, it was mm. a, for a financial reason. I didn't think that there was that they really wanted me, and and so. Um, I learned later, obviously, that, that they that they do. They, I mean, it, it, it's kind of interesting. I didn't mention this last time, but I thank God for the fact that I had to go through the foster system. As much as I hated it, because there was abuse, there was molestation, there was all sorts of things that, that went on within that. However, had I not gone through the foster system and landed with the halls, I would have never met Jesus, because it was them that sent me to Teen Challenge. And now... 20 years later, so I've been out of the program 24 years. Uh, I graduated in 97, um, and uh, this, actually today, I graduated 23 years ago today. Congrats. So I, I forgot about that. Uh, so, um, but I, I've never gone back to my uh, natural family again it, as far as like staying in, in Grand Rapids or anything like that, but here we are over 20 years later, and I'm seeing members of my family that were drug addicts and alcoholics now coming to Christ. My natural dad, who, who got me 
hooked on crystal meth. He's now a Christian. And, wow. and I mean, like, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing God. to be able to watch that. It's awesome, that. yeah. Yeah. And so when we have the opportunity to breathe life into people, like, I, I know that when Pastor Iraq, he looked at me, and, and I was a mess. Like, I was a serious mess. And, and he took the time to just breathe life into me and prophetically call out God's image in me when I had no idea that I was even carrying God's image. He had no idea that, that at some point God would move me down to Toledo to be able to help rescue those that struggle with addiction or mm-hmm. just interact and breathe life into kids that, that, have, that are from all over the state of Ohio uh, that have gone through massive abuse and trauma. And like, he had no idea of that. So it, I, I've learned that, that we've, we need to value everybody that we get to interact with because God is actually sending them into our life so that we right. can breathe life into them. And so, um, yeah, and, and that's, that's really what, what Christmas means to me. It's just that God, God deposited himself. I mean, Romans 8 talks about, you know, how the Holy Spirit is deposited within us. Mm-hmm. We get to actually carry a portion of the Lord within us. We, you know, in 2 Corinthians, Paul says that we actually have the mind of Christ. It's so important mm-hmm. that, we, that we get to know who Jesus is because God made it very, very easy for us to know him. I mean, in, in, yeah. Yeah. So with addiction, you know, COVID has been here. And um, the stats that I'm seeing are, you know, there's a 27% rise in uh, alcohol sales. Mm-hmm. Uh, marijuana, of course, is illegal now. And yeah. that's speeding through. Uh, we have pornography online. Is The sales are out the roof for men. The rise is most alarming. You know, women are rising. Yeah. And yeah. All these addictions, um, usually people keep those on the lowdown. People yeah. don't know it. Like you said, you were a drug addict. You had two jobs. Yep. Yep. And yep. you were a dealer. Yep. Yeah. Neither job knew who, knew that I had done drugs. What could drugs. you say to the person listening and the person here tonight that is struggling with an addiction, and maybe their spouse doesn't even know? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, um, the Lord knows. The the God who created you knows. He sees. So. And I, and I don't say that to be alarming or to scare. Uh, just, just he knows. The other thing is, is that he loves you, and he yeah. sent he sent Jesus to pay for that sin. That that, that sin has already been forgiven, mm. and so uh, he welcomes us. He wants us to know him, uh, and, and so there is no fear. It, it, the thing that bugs me the most about the whole COVID thing this year is the fact that how it's isolated. Uh, and, and made people think that they're alone in their situation. And that's just not true. It's, it's simply not true. Uh, the Lord is there. You know, mm. I mean, the Lord is, is everywhere. However, I know that, that the church also wants to come alongside. And, and, and there, is, there is more physical help out there uh, than, than people are aware of. And, and, and everybody seems to think that, that they're alone in this, and they don't have to be. And, you know, in in the enemy wants us to feel shame of sin and and that's and that's so whenever we feel ashamed that's that's a that's a message from the enemy the the lord isn't like that jesus is not like that he welcomes us with open arms right. and, and there's grace and forgiveness and 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 the enemy does not want you to know that mm-hmm. and, and and i would say that there is more freedom in confession, and in, 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 in it doesn't necessarily you need to come to the front of the church and it's like, hey, I did this. No, you, you need to find somebody that that is a God fearing, that loves the loves the Lord, and and say, hey, I am struggling with this, and and they will come alongside you, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, because they they are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, and, and it's and it frustrating that that we see the church being iso- you know, isolated, and that's yeah. and that and, and it's not. It's not true that we are isolated. We are all together in this, and, and we want to. I know Pastor Nate, I know his heart. He wants to be able to come alongside, and he wants to see people free. Um, and it's not because he wants to know your sin or anything like that or to, to cast judgment. He just wants to see you live the life that God has prepared bef- beforehand for you to be able to fulfill what God has, has for you. If you're breathing, God still wants to have relationship with you. That is the biggest thing that I can tell people is, is that, you know, you're, you're breathing, so that means that God still has a plan for you. He still wants to have a relationship with you. That, mm-hmm. that next breath is his grace telling you, 
compelling you to, to come to him. So don't be afraid. I mean, we are not given a spirit of fear. That's, right. that's from the enemy. God wants to rescue yeah, each absolutely. and every one of us and uh, has done that in your life. So now you're um, the founder and the director and you're rescuing. Yeah. Literally, I've, yeah, we, I've we, watched you. I've watched you carry a guy out of his house into your car yep. to take him to treatment, try to rescue his life. Yeah. Um, you're all in. And uh, that's what I've always loved about you. Thank you. And uh, what do you what do you think God has in store for you now? Well, we're working on now in in the next uh, within the next year. We're we're trying to open a women's center in Northwest Ohio so that we can wow. actually have our own residential center. Um, we, we were actually looking at a property. So what do you need a house? A we do. Place? Well, we need a facility. So yeah. and we're, we're anybody looking, got an extra facility? Yeah, looking at ten bedrooms. Tax right off yeah. right there. So. Uh, There's something great with it. But yeah, we, so we're, we're looking at, at just setting up a, a residential facility for women um, to be able to, to place them in a, in a year-long residential program. Mm. Um, we are still, we're still doing, um, you know, uh, addiction recovery groups uh, on a weekly basis. I do one here. I do another one down in Maumee on Tuesday nights. Um, we have, we've partnered with a couple different places, uh, Silver Pier, where there's, there's an app on your phone that if you, every time you open up the app, it'll take a selfie and can tell if you're high or not. It's, it's crazy. But, What's uh, the name of that app? Uh, Sober Peer. Sober? Sober Peer. Peer. Yep. So, uh, and, it, and it helps, you know, helps you kind of, you know, distinguish what your habits are and, and will tell you actually with, with quite accuracy, you know, whether you're in a position that you're going to go and, 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 uh, hmm. and, and make bad decisions or if you're doing well. Um, I've partnered with Faith Life to be able to offer free Bible software uh, to individuals on their phone, as well as Faith Life TV offers like upwards of 80 mobile ed classes just to, because right. um, really, ultimately, this is relational. Um, so there are, there are certain disciplines that I've had to place in my life to be able to make sure that I don't go back to, you know, a, a, an addictive way of living. Um, but it's ultimately about Jesus, and, and we have to learn more about him, that John 15 model of just abiding in Christ uh, mm -hmm. and, and getting to know him and learning his desires uh, for what he wants for us. Ultimately, uh, I'll, give, I'll give away the secret as I did last time. John 15, 11, uh, Jesus wants our joy to be full just as his joy is. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you're struggling with addiction, you're there not because you necessarily want to be bound by, by chains, you're there because you're looking for an escape. Well, the reality is, is that that Jesus, you know, wants joy for each of us. Uh, there's no heroin addict that will tell you that one shot of heroin is good enough. They have to go back four to six hours later. They, I mean, you have to keep going back, and, and that's what the addiction is. Whereas Jesus, he has long-term joy mm -hmm. that is uh, that 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 goes beyond any any situation. You could learn that you're. You're losing your job. You could learn that you know you're you're having a family member that you know is is struggling health wise, and, and you know you know his presence, which brings joy and peace, and that's what that, that's what the Lord wants for us. Oh, I'm so thankful God rescued you, yeah. and uh, you're rescuing a lot of people in the last few years. We've been in a lot of funerals together. Yeah, that was not God's will for their lives. No, absolutely not. And the enemy stole, and uh, so we're praying for you and. As God uses you and keeps rescuing people's lives and hearts and souls so they don't have to turn to the things of this world. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that addiction is heroin. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's money. Food, texting, video games, anything. All of it. You know, anything that takes the place of God. Wow. Wow. Old you're Testament a idolatry. <laughs> yeah. So. You're a blessing, Winnie, and I love your family. This church loves your family. Thank, Thank you, you for leading that small group and helping men and women get free. That's Monday nights? It is. Here yep. at 630, 630 yep. right? Yep. Yeah, Darla, and, my uh, wife, leads the women's overcomers, and I lead the men's. Yeah, well, appreciate you, man. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. Can we thank Martin? Bless you. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. When we think about being rescued, man, that's the Christmas message, isn't it? I mean, Jesus came... Yeah, so we could get the day off of work or whatever if you got tomorrow off. But it's a little deeper than that, isn't it? He came to save us from our sins. He came to uh, help us. Matthew one twenty one said, you will call his name Jesus because 
he will save us from our sins. That idea of rescuing really is, uh, I don't know, how many of have ever been in a life-threatening situation where you had to be rescued, literally rescued? I bet, there, I bet you look at life completely different. I bet you're grateful, and hopefully that doesn't wear off. I bet you understand grace, that you, you love people off the hook. Everything is not a big deal because you almost lost your life. When we get, when we, we get rescued, there's a gratefulness. There's a, there's a grace that happens. And then we realize the gift that we were given. Years ago, and, uh, you know, when, when our kids were little, I think Levi, I think he were about three. And uh, Levi was, um, he was a quick one. He was fast, fast on his feet at three years old. And um, we had the other kids, and I think we had some family, families over, and we were in the backyard there doing stuff, and we had a gate and stuff. Because we live right on Temperance Road, and uh, if you know Temperance Road, man, it, it, it's like 475 sometimes. I don't understand it, but, uh, man, I'm starting to sound like an old man complaining about how people drive. <laughs> but uh, Levi was in the back doing something, and then we didn't know where he was. And as soon as we realized he was gone, he was already down the driveway in a full-out sprint toward Temperance Road. And so he was just short, so I'm sure cars wouldn't have seen him. And our neighbor, Carol, saw it up from her front porch, came running off her front porch and grabbed Levi before he, he got in the road and brought him. Of course, we were, when he was running down the driveway to get him, and uh, Carol actually saved your life. You should probably go thank her. <laughs> she rescued you. Let me read you a scripture in Colossians. Paul says something about being rescued. It, the Greek word for rescued actually means to be saved from danger. To be saved from danger. Paul said this about Jesus. For he rescued us from the dominion of darkness, or the domain of darkness, where darkness is dominant. He, did, he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. A couple years ago, there was, uh, I, I think we all remember the story of the young soccer team, the junior soccer team, the wild boars in Thailand. They had finished practice and went into a cave, and it was before the monsoons that would come in Thailand. And suddenly the rains came, and that porous limestone, the water instantly, that cave began to flood, and the entrance flooded, and the coach was forced to take those 12 kids deeper into the cave because the water levels began to rise. And they went deeper and deeper and deeper, and they were two and a half miles back in this cave where they had to go and get up high enough so they wouldn't drown. They were found nine days later, and the challenge was, how do we get these, these kids through, through some of these very, very dark, now everything is flooded, how do we get them out one by one before they hypothermia and freeze to death or starve to death or the oxygen that is, that is going? They can't hold their breath that long to get through the caves. People from around the world converged in that cave. How many remember that story? It was, I, 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 was, I was amazed at it. With divers, professional divers, the Navy SEALs, the Royal Divers from Thailand came. All countries just brought in people to try to save them. 10,000 people were brought in in all different ways to figure out how do we get these kids out of this cave because the rains just kept coming. They pumped a half a billion gallons of water out of those caves and it didn't even hardly touch it. You see, a lot of people were involved in that rescue and a lot of people were involved in that rescue and all 12 of those kids were rescued. Those, those they, 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 they dove in oxygen tanks, and one by one, they brought those kids out. Unfortunately, not everyone survived, though. A Navy SEAL, a U.S. Navy SEAL died, and also a Thailand of the Royal Diving Team passed away also getting, getting oxygen tanks to him. The coach even died a year later from a blood infection. See, somebody gave their life for those boys to live. And we can talk about physical rescue, and we're all about our physical, 
But let me tell you, there's something that's as real as your physical being, and that's your spirit. Every one of us has a soul, and it needs rescuing. Our soul needs Christ. We need the Lord in our life. We need, we need him to save us from our sins. That's the whole reason Jesus came. And man, if we miss that this Christmas, we're going to miss it all. I looked at a picture online of those boys uh, a couple months ago. They had a, a special thing at the cave and, and a, a celebration of their life. And they all looked pre- pretty darn happy. And you see, they were, they were, they're smiling. They're grateful to be alive. They're thankful for what was done for them. And they know that life is a gift. I wonder this Christmas if we're grateful if we're given out the grace of Jesus and the forgiveness that we received it because he came to rescue us. There's a verse in Psalms 50, 15. It says, call on me on the day of trouble or the day of danger. And he says, I will rescue you or I will save you. Do you know that is up to us? You know, if, if you were drowning and somebody threw you a lifesaver, you know, and I'm not talking candy, you know, but one of the, the real lifesavers, you would still have to make an effort and grab it. You would still have to hold on. You see, we, the calling on the Lord is on us. That's our part. The Lord's already saved us if you want it. The, 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 the penalty for our sin has already been paid. The forgiveness is there, but we have to call on him. And so he will save us. But I promise you this. My whole adult life, I've done nothing but be a pastor. Okay? I did some paint and I do some other stuff. But I mean, my life has been given to working with people. I've never, ever in my life seen someone call on the name of the Lord and him not answer. Never. Never. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, Paul said in Romans, will be saved. He loves us that much. Martin's story of being rescued to me and say, well, I haven't done all that. I don't do math. I don't, I'm not addicted to, you know, bad stuff. I'm just, I'm just okay. I'm, I don't even feel unhappy. I get it. There are people without Christ that are in that boat. But let me tell you, there are sins in all of our lives that Jesus came to forgive. He said in Matthew 121, and she will be with child, and you shall call his name Jesus again. For he will save us from our sins. That's the Christmas story. He came to give his life so we would live not just with the joy and peace and contentment in this world, but that we would live eternally free from the bondages and the lies of sin. He wants to rescue us. And so Sophia and Allie and the team, Rick, sing this song. Just wherever you're at, maybe you're here, maybe you're online, you're online at home, maybe you're alone. And you're like, man, I, I've already given my life to Jesus. Or maybe you have it. You need to reach out and be rescued. Or maybe you say, Lord, I'm in a terrible position right now. And you need the Lord to reach down and do a miracle in your life and rescue. He will. But while we, we listen to this song, may the words just penetrate your heart. And may they fill you with the faith that you need to reach out to an incredibly great, great, good God. There's no distance we cannot 
Hallelujah. What a powerful song. Would you stand with me tonight? Just bow your head all over this place. And those of you that are joining us online and on the app, would you just, if you're in a situation and you say, man, I received those words of that song, I will let God rescue me, would you just lift a hand to Jesus? And I'm going to close this in prayer. Maybe somebody invited you tonight and you've never asked Jesus in your life. Never asked him to forgive your sins. You believe? You come to church maybe? You're joining us online. You say, I've never done that. I've never asked Jesus for myself. My parents believe or my grandparents believe, but this is a decision every one of us make independently, privately, alone. It's our decision. No one can call on the Lord for us for salvation. If you've never done that, as I pray, I want, you, I want you to do that. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for giving your life. You were born, you were raised, you gave your life to forgive our sin. You were the ultimate sacrifice so we don't have to lose our lives. I pray, God, that each one of us would realize not only were we rescued once, but we live in a state of being rescued. Every day you're with us. I pray for those who have had very difficult 2020, and it's not over yet, that, Lord, you would rescue them and you would show them your favor, that you would let them know that you are with them, that they have value, that you have a blueprint for their life, that you care about each one of us, Lord, and your love is great. Encourage us tonight, and thank you, Lord, for Christmas. Thank you for Jesus coming. In your name we pray, amen. 
before you go, let me just say uh, Saturday night, we usually have a Saturday night service at 6. We're not going to have that this week. But we are having Sunday 9 and 11. And Tim and Cindy Murphy are going to share their story. And so we're so glad you spent your Christmas Eve with us. I just want to publicly uh, congratulate our niece, Paxton. Paxton, Blake, and Jake got uh, engaged to be married a couple weeks ago. And so we haven't publicly said congrats. Love our family. So proud of them. Have a great Christmas. And if you say, man, I should tell my story. I got a, I got a story. You don't have to be on this platform on that sofa to tell your story. Tell your story to somebody. They might need to hear it just one-on-one. God bless. Merry Christmas.